Hello and welcome to Soda Tasting, an online show dedicated to soda reviews and appreciation. I'm Patrick O'Keefe. On this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at Cock and Bull Ginger Beer. Now, this is from Cock and Bull Beverage, and it was introduced in 1946. And there's a bit of a backstory behind this brand. According to the uh, Pipeline Brands website, a man named John G. Martin had purchased a vodka distiller and bought a vodka recipe from the Smirnoff family. But it didn't take off, and during a sales trip, he went to Hollywood and ate at the Cock and Bull restaurant. Um, he talked with the owner, Jack Morgan, and Morgan told him about the ginger beer that he made there at the restaurant. They put it together and created a cocktail, uh, the Moscow Mule, to help generate interest in the vodka. And a friend of Morgan's owned a copper factory and had an overflow of copper cups, so that became a trademark of the drink, the copper mug. Um, that became a, a really popular cocktail mix. And so um, when the restaurant closed in 1987, there was a report by the Los Angeles Times that mentioned that um, back then Martin was generally credited with making vodka a popular drink thanks to his contribution of ginger beer to what became the Moscow Mule. So that's the ginger beer we have here. And um, let's see here, uh, extra ginger. The extra ginger soft drink, naturally flavored, caffeine free. There's even the recipe for Moscow Mule. On the bottle, it's a jigger of vodka plus uh, juice, um, one half lime, ice cubes plus ice cold cock and bowl ginger beer, and drop in, uh, in into the copper cup. Drop in squeezed half lime and stir gently, and you have a Moscow Mule. Whoa, flavor! You are holding in your hands America's best ginger beer, cock and bowl, zippy, zingy, gingery, crisp. Try it, pow! You'll love it. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. It's almost like Christopher Walken. I could. I wish um, wish I had my brother here to do a Christopher Walken impression with those, with that, those couple lines. Um, let's see, Cock and Bull Beverage Corp, uh, Box 49, Hopkins, Minnesota. Cockandbull.com, though the website I visited is no longer online. In 12 ounces, you'll have 140 calories. You'll have 40 milligrams of sodium, 35 grams of total carbohydrates, 40, 35 of which are sugar. And um, it is caffeine-free and sweetened with sugar. The ingredients are carbonated water, sugar, citric acid, caramel color, natural flavors, and less than one-tenth of one percent sodium benzoate as a preservative. I uh, found this at a local uh, restaurant called The Good Life Gourmet. They have a, uh, a little front store area. It's kind of a deli where they sell um, beverages and uh, they have a little soda cooler up front. So I stopped by and check on what they have from time to time and, and this was um, in that cooler. Let's see. You know, it smells like a pretty, you know, it smells pretty typical of a ginger ale. Um, there is a little bit extra, I don't know, it makes me think that it's going to be a little spicier. I mean, it does mention that it is uh, the extra ginger soft drink. So by extra ginger, I'm, I'm assuming that will mean uh, extra spicy. And I kind of get that in the smell, that, you know, that sinus effect. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not typically a fan of spicier ginger ales because I like that um, kind of sweeter ginger flavor that you get. But you know, let's give it a try. So it's interesting on the ginger spice scale. Um, you know, this is definitely spicier than I think the average ginger ale you find uh, mainstream, uh, as far as mainstream ginger ales go. But it's spicier than Verner's. It's spicier than Ale Eight One. It's spicier than like the boiling ginger ale I've had. Those are all uh, ginger ales I've tried or ginger sodas I've tried on the show. Not as spicy as the Blenheim um, Red Cap. You know, not as spicy as that. It's spicy, but not to the point where the flavor just gets overrun by that heat. And so, you know, it's kind of like that. So if you tried the Blenheim Red Cap and it's a little too hot for you, but you want something a little hotter than Werner's or um, L81 or something like that, like, like that then, then give this a try. The ginger flavor is okay. The heat is still a little more than I'd like because it's still, it's though it's not as bad as Blenheim, it still kind of takes away from the flavor a little bit for me because um, I'm just not a big fan of the spicy ginger ale. It's not for casual drinking anyway. So... Two, two and a half is where I'm looking at here. I'm gonna lean on the two side. So I'm gonna put it at two out of five. And um, have you had any cock and bull ginger ale? Let me know in the comments on YouTube or on sodatasting.com. You can subscribe to receive the show automatically via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Google+, RSS, or email. Visit sodatasting.com for those options. 
Thank you for watching, and as always, everything in moderation.